the feed. Y'all, where are the podcast promos? Why I think podcast audience feedback is down. Lipson Connect Beta is out. Have you tried it? We've been recording this show with it since February 2022. Lipson's advertised cast signed Aaron Mankey's lore. Woohoo! The new Lipson integration with Apple Podcast subscriptions, discussing Microsoft's Val E and podcasting falling off a cliff. Yeah. And of course, geographic and user agent download stats. Hello, I'm Elsie Escobar, Director of Community and Content for Libsyn, and this is episode 235 of the feed, the official Libsyn podcast, the podcast that takes it beyond how to podcast into keeping you podcasting with podcasting tips and information for the everyday podcaster and taking you inside Libsyn. We love to feature podcasts and podcasters on this show. So how do you do that? Send in your 30 second promo. Yeah. All you have to do is attach it to an email and send it to the feed at libsyn.com. The feed at libsyn.com. If you don't have a promo, but you want your voice on the show, ask us a question or add to the conversation that you hear in an episode. Send us voice feedback. You can call us at 412 573 1934, or you can use speakpipe at speakpipe.com slash the feed. And folks, I started a new thing, a new thing just for the feed audience in hopes to instigate a little bit more community. I'm ready for it. Stop for a moment, tap through the show notes and find the link called the feed volley community. All right. It's going to be right there front and center. It's an app that supports audio, video and text. I'd love to cultivate a bit of conversation there as it pertains to the show. And you can give feedback super easy right from there. I've tried this before, to be fair, using Voxer. But this specific app, though, is specifically created to cultivate conversation and community. And I'm feeling like testing things out. Why not? Right. So I'd love for you to test it out with me. And who knows, this might actually end up being a nice little corner of the podcasting universe. And hey, you will also learn a little something else about another app up there. All right. So looking forward to seeing you there. And now on to our main conversation with Rob Walsh, VP of Podcaster Relations at Lipson, as well as my co-host right after the first and only. Y'all, first and only. Promo of the episode, Flourish in the Foreign. Hey everyone, I'm Christine Job, the host and creator of Flourish in the Foreign, the podcast that elevates, celebrates, and affirms the voices and stories of Black women living and thriving abroad while exploring living abroad as a pathway to wellness. Listen to Flourish in the Foreign on all major podcasting platforms and check out the website at flourishintheforeign.com. Hello, Rob. Good generic time of the day, Elsie. Thank you so much, so much for Flourish in the Foreign for that lovely promo. Yeah, I mean, it was so good. I, I don't think we're going to have another promo on this episode. <laughs> That's a good way to position it, Rob. That is a great way to position it. Is that a nice spin on we don't have any other promos? Yes, that is a wonderful spin on we don't have any other promos, which brings me to something I'd really love to chat with you all that are, you know, our listeners here who are the majority of the time folks who consume this podcast, our podcasters. And I'd like to have a little dialogue with you all. So if you have any feedback, please email the feed at com with any comments. And of course, you can also record yourself with your voice and send it over. Okay, so here's the scoop. I wrote a look back for the feed last year on 2022. And I, you know, the blog post is up. I covered a few things, but I'm going to focus on discussing here just my third point that I wrote in this blog post. I spent some time, a lot of time kind of thinking about my process, producing this show, being in podcasting and creating content. So I did it from that perspective. And number three was this, getting a podcast audience to engage is a job 
onto itself. So I'm going to read what I wrote. And then Rob, I'd love a little bit of insight on this because I kind of sat down with this in recognizing some things that had happened in the past, you know, couple years, actually. So here we go. I get an opportunity to communicate with podcasters on a daily basis by observing social media conversations, asking questions, and corresponding with podcasters through email and comments. One of the top concerns that I see is the lack of audience interaction. They often query how to even get feedback. Given that I established a dialogue with our audience early on with the feed, I've thankfully always had feedback, but I've observed it take a dip this past year. In the past, emails, comments, and voice feedback simply came in. I never reached out for feedback outside of asking for it in the podcast. The podcast itself was the one and only place. Now, I regularly ask for feedback on social media channels. What this tells me is that folks are much busier than they used to be and are probably listening to more than one podcast at a time. The path from listening to sending in feedback is less clear. Speaking from my own experience as a podcast listener, I found that my time and attention from point A to point B as it pertains to any kind of digital communication is often interrupted by an exorbitant amount of attention grabbers. The biggest culprit, notifications, and the behavioral design of social media sites. It is extraordinarily challenging to follow through while being on a smartphone. And if it's also even if it's the also the easiest thing to do. Forgetting what you were about to do is commonplace. I found myself relying on social media accounts of my favorite podcasters or consuming their adjacent content through Instagram or YouTube as a way to remind myself to answer questions they've asked or to send in feedback. I assume that's also one of the reasons I've seen a drop in getting feedback from just publishing episodes. Folks are on to the next thing quickly. Plus, we're also competing with the thousands of asks that our audience gets on a daily basis from all the other content they are consuming digitally. If you like this thread, retweet, remember to subscribe to my channel, sign up for my newsletter here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Another possible reason for the decline in podcast feedback is that in the past, folks were only able to get podcasting insider info from podcasts about podcasting. Now they are able to get that information from a ton of sources, social media posts, blog posts, podcasting newsletters, podcasting communities, and YouTube videos. This was not the case when our show began. Podcasts about podcasting were the only way to learn about podcasting and have questions asked and answered. Listening to a long podcast requires a much bigger investment than doing a quickie ask on social media. The social dopamine hit will always win. Thoughts on that, Rob? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, we're not getting the the number of promos in here we'd like. Um, people are busy, but you know, it's not like we don't mention. Hey, just email the feed at libsyn I know. Send us that in, uh, and maybe when you hear that, as a listener, you need to pause and send a, a reminder or go, "Hey Siri." send me a email or send me a reminder or set up a reminder. And we just had Siri jump in there. But the point is asking S-I-R-I to do something for you if you're on an iOS device or just pausing if you're on an Android device and quickly sending yourself a text or an email um, message reminder to do that. Yeah, people are busy. There's no automated way to put it in the podcast app to have a button to to do those things, unfortunately. And it does require interaction by the end user. Yeah. And I mean, mind you, though, Flourish and the Foreign, she responded because I tweeted about it. Mm -hmm. So all that to say for me, I'm going through this myself. These are pain points that I want to solve for us because I had a workflow that didn't involve asking on social. It was all in the show. And now I'm finding that I need to have that little nudge because I need that nudge. Like I know that me personally, Elsie needs the nudge. I remember I listen and I'm like, oh my God, I have to go do this. And then I forget. And then I remember when I somehow bump into the producer or any other outreach, whether it's a newsletter, social, anything else, 
that reminds me, oh yeah, I was supposed to have done that thing. And it's that extra second layer. So I'm going to have to add it. And I think part of the process, even as I was getting the show together today, I'm like, oh my gosh, I only have one promo. I forgot to add another layer, right? I forgot to do that. And it was too late last night. And I'm like, I'm not going to go and nudge people right now. So I'm just going to add it to me and I will report back. I'll report back as to what's going on. Now, if those of you who are listening right now, if you've solved this problem or are looking for other ways to solve the problem or are experiencing the same thing, send us some feedback. And hey, if you want to help out and help me come up with something fun to get promos, because I really want promos in. I want promos in. Let me know if there's another way for us to be able to do that. So email the feed at Lipson.com. All righty, let's go ahead and move forward to some Lipson-centric news. Lipson Connect has launched in Lipson. Uh, as long as you have a $20 or higher plan, uh, you have access now to Lipson Connect. You do need to be in the Lipson 5 UI. And then in the upper right side, click on New and then select Connect Call. Then you can either select Record Now or in most cases, Schedule Call. Uh, we have already had some of the same questions come in multiple times. So here is the very, very initial FAQ. Wait, can you hold on just a second, Rob? I'm just going to clarify this um, really quickly that all accounts currently have access to Lips and Connect. So if you want to test it out, what Rob is going to be talking about, please feel free. We will not have it forever, though. It's going to go away February 7th and only for $20 and above account. So for now, it is there for you to test. Anybody, everybody, all the people. Okay, so as of February 7th, you Correct. will then need yes. a $20 or higher plan. Correct. All right. Yes. So FAQ question one, how many guests can Lipson Connect support? This is first up because people either want to have really big calls or they just want to try and break things. <laughs> either way... <laughs> The answer is, we have tested up to 19 people on a call. Tested is different than recommended. I personally don't recommend you have more than five or six people on a single call because when you do, it makes it hard for the audience to track voices and figure out who is who and what's being said by whom. There is the technical limit and then the limit the audience can endure. And in this case, your audience will break before Connect does. The audience will break. <laughs> it's true. I, this is in video. I mean, if you have 10 different people talking, people's mind just not like, who is that again? Which right. person was that? And and try to equate that. Uh, no, no. Mind you. It's like being. I'm going to push back only because I can see a use case that's not like a chat call. Meaning you get, yeah. you know, 10 people on the call. It's that one time that everybody's going to discuss things. And then since you get individual audio tracks, you can do a lot of work to not necessarily make it conversational, but if you're doing like a very highly edited type of a podcast where the conversation is not the thing, but what the person said is the thing, I could see that happening. Meaning you'll record it one time, you get it over with in an, in an hour, and then you can do your editing and post and be done with it, but not as a conversation. Yeah. But anyway, okay, moving on. <laughs> Question two, can I use Connect like a radio show where guests can call in? Hmm. Well, I mean, you can schedule a call for a select time and then add extra recipients who would be on the call. But I think these people are really asking about random people calling in like on a radio show. When people ask this, they typically are thinking there is also a place anyone can listen live. And that's not how this works. It's more like a Zoom call in that people need an invite and you need to let them into the call. In theory, you could send out a bunch of invites to your audience, public chat room, and they could request to come in and maybe even have a moderator checking people before they come in. But this is not a live to the world offering. It is a live only to those on the call offering. And as long as they're one of the people that were invited, sure, they can come in. Number three. Is there an extra fee for the service? Again, I'm going to say this from the perspective that you're listening on this February 7th or later. Before February 7th, anybody has a Lipson account. But from February 7th and on, there is not an extra fee if you're on the advanced 
plans, $20 or more, or Lipson Pro or Lipson Plus. So in short, there is only an extra fee as of February 7th if you are on the five, seven, or $15 plans for Lipson.com customers. In short, there is no additional fee for everybody else, which means the most of our customers can enjoy and continue using uh, Lipson Connect going on with no, uh, not having to pay any more. So yes, it's just a really nice new feature for most lips and customers. And if you are on the $15 plan, which is one of the uh, more so than the seven or the fives, just for $5 more, you get advanced stats and lips and connect. So why would you not upgrade? All right. Now we do have some feedback from podcasters early on. And here's the first one. You want to read this first one here, Elsie? Sure. Hey, Rob, in case you're looking for feedback, just used connect for the first time. Had one guest on, he got the email and came on right on time. Was stable and recorded separate tracks as I wanted. Just tested them out on Audacity and the two tracks are aligned perfectly. Unquote. And that is from Doug Parsons from America Adapts Podcast. Thank you, Doug, for that feedback. Folks, please keep sending that feedback in. It's greatly appreciated. And you can send it right here to the show, the feed at Libsyn.com. <laughs> uh, you can record it or you can email it and then email it, or you can just send us text and we'll read it to you like we did there for Doug. Yeah. Hey, by the way, another thing that you can do with Connect2, which I think is kind of awesome, is that you can record yourself only. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have a person to do it. And remember when I was looking for this solution, I was looking for this solution to this problem a few episodes back. I cannot remember which episode it was, but I was like, I need something that I can send somebody to record on a browser that's super easy, that is only one person. So it's not a remote recording for somebody else. So if you guys want to test that out too, like open it up. And even if you don't have a call, just give yourself a little recording of yourself, record yourself only, download it, listen to the audio, or maybe you can send us feedback using Connect. That would be amazing. Again, the feed at Lipson.com. Now, uh, there's going to be all kinds of details in case you need a little bit more information inside of the show notes for this episode. So there's like a couple of videos that we put out. They're both on YouTube. One of them is how to use Connect. And the other one is why using Connect is another little th These are short, by the way. These are not like super walkthrough stuff. And also we have all kinds of support resources in case you kind of get stuck. We have six uh, knowledge base articles for you to refer to. I will have all of those in the show notes so you can follow them there and look at the screenshots and all of that fun stuff. That would be incredible. And again, it's going to be available to everybody up to February 7th. After February 7th, only those that have $20 accounts or more are going to have access. And it is part of your uh, lips and dashboard right within there and do all this stuff. That is it. All right, moving on. Oh, oh we should mention the official product name is Lips and Connect Beta, as it is still in officially beta. in beta. Correcto. Yes. Correcto. Okay. Beta equals bugs. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. And then any customer questions... About Connect specifically, there is a special support email to send stuff in. So it's connect support altogether, connect support at Lipson.com. So questions, issues, requests, or whatever, send them over to connect support at Lipson.com. All right. Staying with uh, some Lipson news, we just signed Aaron Mankey's lore to an exclusive multi-year advertising relationship. Very nice to have Lore come back home where it started. And uh, here is a quote that Aaron had to say, quote, podcast audiences are growing rapidly worldwide and Lore's new partnership with Libsyn creates a clear opportunity for brands to align there uh, with our unique production and, and reach our growing community of listeners. In fact, Libsyn was the hosting platform I used to publish my very first episode of Lore back in the spring of 2015. So I'm delighted to bring that story full circle by partnering with their remarkable advertise cast team. Lore has always been an ideal show for advertisers. It is evergreen and timeless and incredibly successful and revered by millions of listeners globally, quote, unquote, in there. So very much look forward to working with Aaron again. Uh, nice when one of your favorite shows comes back and 
link in the show notes to the full press release on that. Right on. And then finally on the Libsyn news front is the announcement by Libsyn and Apple that Libsyn now supports and rolled out the support of Post for Apple subscription publishing. So Libsyn is among the first select group of podcast platforms to integrate with Apple podcast subscriptions. The integration empowers Libsyn creators to launch and grow podcast subscriptions by streamlining the publishing process to Apple podcasts. Apple podcast subscriptions is designed for creators who want to offer their audience premium experience through monthly or annual paid subscriptions. Subscriptions can offer listeners early access to new content, access to exclusive archival content, ad-free listening, and more premium benefits. All Lipson customers can now publish Apple podcast subscriptions from Lipson without any additional fees. And uh, here is from John Gibbons, Lipson's president and chief product officer. Here's a quote on this. We've built our business on supporting creators and making it easier for them to share their work across more platforms. And we're thrilled to be collaborating with Apple, the pioneering platform of the podcast industry with the availability of Apple podcast subscriptions. We look forward to building on our partnership with Apple to simplify podcast distribution for Libsyn's 75,000 plus podcasters and make it seamless for them to grow their shows and subscriptions on Apple Podcasts, unquote. For more information on Apple Podcast subscriptions, visit Apple's podcast for creators at, uh, we'll have a link in the show notes because it's like podcasters.apple.com slash and then a whole bunch of other stuff. But we'll have a link on that. What is really nice and I think unique right now is we make it where you can sign up with Libsyn for our new auto ads program where we bring ads to your show uh, hosted on Libsyn, but then can also send an ad-free version to Apple for your paid subscribers, in short, allowing you to monetize your podcast via ads. And for those that say, I liked it when it was ad-free, you can simply say, go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe to the ad-free version. In short, you do one upload to Libsyn, and that's it. And we help you monetize on the Libsyn side, and then on the Apple side, we make it really easy easy for you to connect. I mean, saving you work. So basically, we're helping you make money and time. You think about it that way. And that's really important to many podcasters because as a podcaster, we're usually missing or lacking one or both of those items. If you have questions on this, just email me, rob at lipson.com and link in the show notes to our PR on this. But uh, it looked like there were some people that had a little confusion because um, there's some additional features with this announcement as well. And this one was on Twitter, and they said, at Libsyn, if Apple Podcasts is already one of the distributors of our pod based on our Libsyn plan, do we have to do anything differently? So for anyone that saw this and, and thought they have to now set up this and they, they, where they have no plans, so we should add this last note, there's an additional piece that came with it, and, and it has nothing to do with Apple subscriptions or premium content. And that is now the ability for users to submit their brand new free to everyone podcast directly to Apple from inside the Libsyn UI. This is not a feature that should be used by anyone with a podcast already in Apple Podcasts or really anyone with a validated Apple ID. It is meant for those that cannot get an Apple ID validated and can't get access to Podcast Connect. If you can log in at podcastsconnect.apple.com, then this new feature is not for you. It is more for the business podcast where that person was not able to get a validated Apple ID, especially if they don't have an Apple device to validate that Apple ID, which is still an issue for some. For those people, great news. You can now submit your podcast to Apple directly from Libsyn but this is just for a small percentage of podcasters. Note, if you do use this feature to submit to Apple and the show is already in Apple Podcasts, it will result in a double or duplicate listing. There you go. So part of, again, the feature set now in, in the Lipson 5 UI for the, the destination for Apple is you can submit directly, but you shouldn't if you already have an Apple ID. You should go to Apple Podcast Connect, 
you know, podcastconnect.apple.com and submit your RSS feed there still. That is still the recommended way to do it. It is only for those that can't get a validated Apple ID. All right. On we go. All right. This is a question. Hi, Rob. I have a question for you. The links that are being published directly to Twitter, for instance, look like this. And then there's a link to the link that they sent. Where in the settings am I able to customize this link? I'm looking at Twitter and have selected episode permalink. Is the website section under settings where I can change the appearance of this? Thanks. And this is from NR. Hi, NR. You want, when setting up Twitter, to set it up to use the episode permalink like you mentioned. You do this in Libsyn 5 UI, settings, social, and then Twitter. And then when publishing an episode, select permalink points to custom URL. And then in the custom permalink URL box right below that, put in the custom URL you want for that episode to be in Twitter. Note that URL has, has, has to be different for every episode. You cannot have it be mydomain.com for every episode. And then again, you know, for one episode, then another and another, another. It must be a unique permalink for each individual episode. So maybe it's mydomain.com slash app one, and then mydomain.com slash app two, mydomain.com slash app three. But it has to be different between each episode. But there you go. That's how easy it is to put in a custom link to go out to Twitter and uh, be used elsewhere. Nice. I put a little article in here that called my attention just because it had to do with voice. And as you know, we covered chat GPT last episode, and this actually was released in the month of January, and this is in Ars Technica. And I'm just going to read from an article from Ars Technica about Microsoft's new AI that can simulate anyone's voice with three seconds of audio, okay? Let's see if this is an issue. I'm quoting directly from the article just because I just really quickly looked at the stuff that called my attention. All right, quote, on Thursday, Microsoft researchers announced a new text-to-speech AI model called Valley, Valley, I guess it's Val-E. Val, yeah. Valley, right? Like Valley Girl. Val, yeah, kind of mm-hmm. like Valley Girl. That can closely simulate a person's voice when given a three-second audio sample. Once it learns a specific voice, Valley can synthesize audio of that person saying anything and do it in a way that attempts to preserve the speaker's emotional tone. Its creators speculate that Valley could be used for high-quality text-to-speech applications, speech editing, where a recording of a person could be edited and changed from a text transcript, making them say something they originally didn't, and audio content creation when combined with other generative AI models like GPT-3, so chat GPT-3, right? You know where this can be used? Where? (laughs) To imitate Sarah Connor's mother. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, dear. I, Honey, I'm just so worried about you. Can't you tell me where you are? Oh, my God. That was a key plot point <laughs> in Terminator. <laughs> how about that? Well, how about that with the emotional tone, correct? It did. I mean, that was exactly what Terminator did in that movie. If Microsoft hadn't come up with Valley, the movie would have ended there. They would have been off and lost and they would have gotten away. Holy no. monkeys. Holy monkeys. Holy monkeys. So there I'm sorry. I totally took over this with the Terminator reference. I yeah, but know. still, though, I mean, you're, you're making a point now because now I'm just going to move on to the last, the summary of this article that says this, quote, since Valley could synthesize speech that maintains speaker identity, it may carry potential risks in misuse of the model, such as spoofing voice identification or impersonating a specific speaker. To mitigate such risks, it is possible to build a detection model to discriminate whether an audio clip was synthesized by Valley. We will also put Microsoft AI principles into practice when further developing the models. End quote. Skynet. Skynet is using this. (laughs) Oh my God, great, awesome. Anywho, I'm just laying it out there because... Does anybody see any problems with this? <laughs> well, you know, your descript could learn voice. It couldn't learn it from three seconds. It needed more. Correct. And I think that that's the 
that's to me, it's the three second thing that I'm like, are you kidding me? And if it's that powerful, holy monkeys. Mind you, though, I could see how this could be amazing to use for productivity and for strategy and, you know, marketing things. I think that that's great. It's just it, there's just all of this stuff. I don't know how you get an emotional tone from three seconds. I also do not know that. Yeah, because I'm not running the full gamut of my emotional <laughs> tones in three seconds of anything I say. I think I can. I think sometimes I can. Yeah, I mean, you can say the same thing, exact words in completely different emotional tones. Right. You get married, you can say, I do. <laughs> or you can say, I do. <laughs> And there's completely different emotional tones in those. Yes. Which is why I'm curious, you know, because I, I th this was actually something I really wanted to test. So I'm just laying it there just for you all to discuss. And again, if you have any feedback, thoughts, opinions, whatevs, the feed at Lipson.com. And now keeping on the Twitter front, because we seem to be keeping on adding coverage every single episode, I just wanted to let you all know that now Twitter has opened up the verification for organizations, which actually impacts larger companies. So if you used to have a verified company account, those of you who listen to our show sometimes do. So there's going to be a link in the show notes where you can be part of the wait list. It's got some questions and that's to not have somebody impersonate your company and destroy them financially, <laughs> which is what happened when uh, just a few months ago. Yeah, which, yes. Yes. So this was not a bad, that was not a good thing. It was a pharmaceutical company, right? They said they were going to give away. Yeah, it was a diabetes thing. One of the medicines, yeah. the diabetes medicine, right? Yeah, and it plummeted the stock. Yeah, it was not good. And also, I guess there was some stuff from like, I think it was a Nintendo or something like that, where like, there were some things coming out from a, an account that were very like they were showing Mario with doing very NSFW things yeah. that were coming from a company that looked like it was them. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff is not good. Anyway. Well, Mario needed an update. <laughs> And um, I actually, since we've been covering all the apps that are coming out to replace Twitter, I have a new one, okay, that I have not checked out at all. I want it really badly, but cannot do it. And this one is unfortunately only for iOS and Mac at this point. It is called Ivory. It's called Ivory. And it is from the team that created, I believe it's TweetBot. They created TweetBot. Mm -hmm. It's TapBots right? So Ivory mm -hmm. is the app that is kind of like TweetBot, but it's for Mastodon, hence Ivory. And it's got the cutest little icon. It's a little like Mastodon, cutie little elephanty looking thing. Very awesome. And it is very Mac-like. I guess it solves all the problems that make Mastodon annoying, which is all the clunkiness, all the weird stuff that it does and it's currently in beta and you can join their no no they don't call it beta oh, they sorry. call it early access oh they call it early sorry they call it early access yes they're going to the the web 2 3.0 name for beta which is oh, early access okay early which, access which means there are features missing and we are actively building them while we you while you get to use the app yes i i love that Yes. And, and mind you, you, you only get access with the test flight and it's closed. So you cannot get access, by the way. I'm just saying. You'll see the link in the show notes. If you want to follow them, you can actually follow. They have a place where you can follow them on um, Mastodon, of course. And that's about the extent of how you find out about this. <laughs> and you can check out what it does and all of that fun stuff. But it looks to me, it looks pretty. It looks very nice. Mm -hmm. So I would like to... Whenever this opens up, I'd love to know a little bit more about Ivory because it looks very nice. And now moving on to podcasting falling off a cliff. <laughs> oy vey. Uh, so, oy I'm just vey. saying. I just want to say oy vey. Oy vey. <laughs> okay. Go, Rob. Shall we take out your uh, soapbox? Yeah, I mean, look. Or not. New podcast creation has not fallen off a cliff because there was no cliff to fall off. There was no mountain of real new shows. Right. I mean, it's all bogus. I mean, on, on January 1st, 2021, there was 370,000 
podcast that had at least 10 new episodes and released a new episode in the last 90 days, what we would call or define as active podcasts. That number today is also just about 370,000, like 367,000. But back at the start of 2021, there were, quote, 1.7 million, unquote, podcasts. Today, there is, quote, 2.5 million, unquote, podcasts in Apple Podcasts. Reality is that number is just RSS feeds in the Apple directory. But only, again, 370,000 are active podcasts. And if you think the 2.5 million is a mountain of cards, then don't even look at the bogus 4 million from Podcast Index or the 4.8 million from Spotify. All those numbers are just ridiculous. Again, it's about real podcasts with active new content, and that number flatlined two years ago. What The Verge looked at, well, was a fake mountain, like the one at Disney World, <laughs> right? It's just perspective, and, they're, and they've been fooled to think there's a mountain there, but it's not. It's just a building. That's a couple stories tall. Anyway, Anchor and all those bogus new RSS feeds that cluttered and still clutter the podcast directories are the real issue. Take all that out, and there is no story here at all. Matter of fact, the article talked about an 80% drop in new shows, but last year we had a double-digit growth in new signups for shows. Again, throw out Anchor. We should be so lucky. Um, (laughs) Throw out Anchor, and this is not a story at all. Or make a story just about Anchor falling off a cliff of signups. Uh. But in podcasting, podcasting is fine. There is not a death of new shows. There is simply just not an influx of fake shows anymore. And that's what there was. Fake or bogus shows that released one episode. There's what, one point something million shows out there that released one episode ever and have an RSS feed. That's not a show. That's a, I wonder what this button does. That's what that was. I just read this article and I went, really? (laughs) Well, no, <laughs> I was confused. That's all I have to say. I was like, what? I get headlines bring awareness and attention. You know what I mean? But I think that the hardest thing for me is the fact that I think the majority of us that know things or that are in or have been in podcasting for a long time understand so much more and have context and are saying what you're saying. And folks that are touching podcasting, like In their periphery, meaning they're on a social media platform and all they literally do is read 240 characters or less of something. Something that's going to take three seconds of their mind share and they are taking that and running with it because that's our behavior. We don't ever question. We don't ask conversations where and also where are people going to be able to get nuanced information? They're not going to get it. That's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that that will be like a snowball effect where it just keeps on picking up stream. And then people are going like, well, you know, podcasting is falling off a cliff. You know, podcasting is falling off. And it's this whole entire narrative that it just makes me mad. That's all I'm saying. It just makes me mad because it makes it harder for most of us to help people. On the plus side, it gives me a nice little soapbox rant to start off with for my presentation at PodFest this week. But given that, like some truth telling, though, um, I did get an article uh, sent to me, actually. Thank you so much. I just want to say thank you because it's always nice to have somebody reach out to me. So Matthew McLean, you are awesome. Thank you so much for sending this over. And he actually had been listening to our conversation in the past few episodes, or at least the last episode, where we were talking about video and audio. And he wrote this amazingly awesome article about uh, why video cannot replace audio in podcasting over at thepodcasthost.com. Please feel free to go read it. He does a wonderful job at coining almost everything that we have mentioned in the past when it comes to video in a really nice, clear way. So please go check it out. Link in the show notes. Agree, agree, agree with what he had to say. Video is harder, takes more work than audio, and there's more time in the day to consume audio and which we've said ad nauseum on the show over the years, but um, agree. See, I can agree. I can be agreeable <laughs> with articles out there. <laughs> I I'm, not, there. I'm not always get off my lawn guy. Exactly. Yes, he did a really good job. It's a very good article. So please go check it out. And actually, this leads me into just sharing. up. I've been sharing about HBO Max. Um, I talked about it last year when I saw that there was a podcast area in uh, HBO Max, the app itself. Okay, wait. I got to pause okay. you for a second Sorry. here. HBO Max, new show, The Last of Us, right? Yeah. 
really good. We start watching it. My wife's, why are you making me watch this? This is, I'm not going to like this. And then at the end of the episode, okay, let's watch another episode. I'm like, but honey, there's just one. Oh. What do you mean there's just one? Yeah. I go, it's weekly. She's like, really? Uh, uh. So she started out with, I, I'm not going to like it. And at the end, she was like, I want more. Yeah. So it is about The Last of Us. But now let's talk about this again. The HBO Max execution of podcasts last year, they had it in the app. At least I consume a lot of the streaming content myself on the iPad because my kids are watching things on TV. And so I watch my stuff on my iPad and it was there and I was very pleased. I consumed a couple of podcasts inside the app. It seems like they're no longer there. I looked everywhere. I could not find podcasts what? on the app. I know. I'm what? bummed. What? I know. What? I'm very sad. HBO, what? Yes, correct. Mind you, they still do have, in quote, commercials or ads for the corresponding podcast. Because when I watched The Last of Us, it promoted the podcast. Okay, so we got Absolutely that. All good. right. So they promoted the right. podcast. Obviously, you can subscribe it to wherever you get your podcasts, but they also have it on YouTube. Now, the execution of this podcast on YouTube is very, very simple. Like their other stuff, it essentially has, you know, those multidimensional backgrounds, you know, like how Apple has that thing where it kind of sort of moves in the back, like video something in the back, yeah. but it's not, it's like a picture. It's like a graphic, right? So it's a graphic in the background and it literally has episode one of last of us at the bottom. And it has a little branding of HBO. It is so simple. And there's very little transitions into anything as in like almost nothing changes on the screen other than a tiny little bit of movement in the background here and there. And the audio quality is fantastic. At the time of this recording, there have been 681 comments in that first episode from the Last of Us podcast. All of them have to do with the show and all of the people are talking amongst themselves, which is building community around the podcast. And again, at the time of this recording, this show, this episode released three days ago of the podcast. And it has had 214 views and you can also- 14,000. Oh, sorry, 214,000, excuse me, 214,000 views. And you can actually look at the sections where people are listening more intently and also when they kind of drop off. But for the most part, everybody listened to the whole thing. And of course, there's a drop off at the end, which is totally normal. So I'm just saying that HBO is doing video but they're doing video in the audio way. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not mm -hmm. recording people. Like they're not having a video of the people. They're having people talking with a really gentle, like it's all about the audio. So good for you, HBO Max. I really like this simple approach to getting your show in all the places. That is it. We have an email here. You want to read this one? Sure. This one says, hi, Rob. Sorry to bother you again. What is this three times in one week? Do you know if episode artwork needs to follow the same specifications as cover artwork? I've always created episode artwork to the same specs for good measure. 1400 by 1400 minimum, 3000 by 3000 max, under 512 KB. However, I cannot find any resource specifying the dimensions and file sizes of the episode artwork. They all talk about the cover artwork. A client of mine had someone on Fiverr create hundreds of episode artwork files at 600 by 600. And I'm trying to determine if they all will cause a problem. Thanks for your help. Regards, NR. Hi, NR. Uh, yes, episode work must meet all the same specs as show level artwork. That said, it is best to make episode artwork less than 100 kilobytes. I typically recommend 1400 by 1400 and less than 100 kilobytes for the episode level artwork. So it works out like this. Show level artwork specs, 1400 by 1400 pixels min to 3000 by 3000 pixels max, square, JPEG or PNG, RGB, and less than 500 kilobytes in file size. So show level artwork, you know, what we've talked about forever. Episode level artwork, I tweak it a little bit and I just say 1400 by 1400 pixels square, JPEG, RGB, and less than 100 kilobyte file size. Per why to make episode artwork smaller than in file size than show level, 
That is for those of you that embed the episode level artwork into the ID3 tags. It is best if you are doing that to go with the artwork that's less than 100 kilobytes as the ID3 tags are part of the header info in the MP3, meaning that's the part of the file that is delivered first, then the data with the actual audio comes second, which all comes back to meaning a, if you have a slow internet connection as a listener, there's a noticeable pause between clicking play and the audio starting if you have a 500 kilobyte piece of artwork in the ID3 tags versus a 100 kilobit piece of artwork. Most people are going, well, my connection is so fast, I won't notice it. Yes, for you, that's probably true. But there are people around the world that listen to podcasts globally, and not all of them have really good internet connections. Some of them in the US have really poor internet connections because of the carrier they're on. So don't take your internet connection as a way to design. Think about the people with slow, and again, go with the smaller artwork there. And if you are going to create custom episode artwork, it is recommended you do keep the file size lower than the show level artwork to be considerate for folks out there, especially if you're adding it into the ID3 text. One other piece of feedback we got in here um, before we get to stats. This one comes from Doug Parsons and he writes, hey Rob, thought you'd appreciate this. I uh, was goofing around with questions on the OpenAI beta question box and asked this question. So this is a GPT and you'll be happy with AI's response. Me, this Doug, wrote, what is the perfect length for a podcast episode? Ooh. Ooh. And AI's answer was, there is no single perfect length for a podcast episode. It depends on the content, the audience, and the goals of the podcast. Generally, shorter episodes tend to be more accessible and easier to consume, while longer episodes can be used to explore more topics or topics more deeply. It is important to consider your audience and the type of content you are producing when deciding the length of an episode unquote from the AI and that came in from Doug. Well, Doug, thank you very much from that. And people are using, you know, the chat GPT to create content. <laughs> My son, younger son, Porter, there was a, a little issue here at the household and he wrote up a nice apology letter to my wife and handed it to my you know to his mom and he apologized for the situation and my wife looks at this it, it, Karen and she she reads this and she's going Porter you didn't write this this is like perfect English but it matched and, and I walk over and she's telling she's showing me and I read it I go Porter I got three letters for you GPT and he just starts busting out laughing oh I go gosh. I thought so so yes kids are even using it to write apology letters to their moms there are people that are using it to create content. They're asking it and creating scripts and doing podcasts with it. Um, it's being used. It's scary. It's being used. Scary, it's scary, scary. scary. But hey, it did nail the uh, perfect length answer. So kudos. Yeah, be careful if you're um, Sarah Connor. Oh my God. You don't know who you're talking to. Mix it in with Microsoft. Oh, Skynet. Ah. <sighs> All right. Well, then this would be the place where we would have our third promo of the episode. But alas, we didn't have a promo number two and we didn't have a promo number three. So what are we doing, Rob? We're just asking for promos. Please. We're just reminding some. people that that if you're listening to this and you haven't sent a promo in recently, you're a bad marketer of your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you're there a we bad go. Oh, come on. Don't shame the people. They can get it done. If you want to get out of the Sin Bin marketing podcast box, just send a promo in and you're out. It's that simple. Boom, you're out. Now, this is if you've sent promos in the past, you're not in the Sin Bin. But for the others, promoting your podcast to other podcasters, kind of a good thing. Just saying. Oh my gosh. The feed at Lipson.com. There you have it. All right. Here we go. Stat time, stat time, stat time. Um, and this is geographic and user agent stats. And first up, country breakdowns for December per download geographically from all sources. The USA, 64.4%. Canada, and this is for December. So again, December 2022. Downloads across all lips and shows. 64.4% of the downloads, USA. 5.2% Canada. The UK came in at 4.6%. Australia, 3.5%. Germany, 3.1%. Sweden, 1.5%. And Japan, at 1.0%. That's everybody over 1%. But rounding out the top 20 in order are Mexico, Spain, Brazil, India, France, Netherlands, Denmark, Switzerland, New Zealand, Russia, Iran, Ireland, and Norway. 
Uh, we had one new country in December versus November, and that was Iran. Between November and December, those with changes greater than 0.2% was the U.S., moving up to 64.4% from 63.9%. Again, not a surprise. It was down in November because of Thanksgiving, which is more of a U.S. holiday, but then equaling out as Christmas holiday is more of a global holiday. Of course, check your numbers, uh, your stats, and see how you measure up to these numbers for December. And now into user agents part of stats. And for December, across all shows globally, hosting on Libsyn and Libsyn Pro for IAB stats, mobile downloads were at 93.05% of all downloads going direct to the mobile device. That is down a smidge from November's 93.21%. Computer downloads were up a smidge to 6.64%. Home voice attendant plus set-tops boxes were at 0.31% in December. And the iOS to Android ratio in December was 5.8 to 1. That is down a smidge from November 6.0 to 1. And uh, mobile aggregator apps, not from Spotify or from Apple, in December were 10.6% of all downloads, up from 10.05% in November. And a big dog in aggregator apps is still Apple, with Apple Podcast app, iTunes, and the Apple Podcast ecosystem coming in at 69.4% of all downloads for December. Number two for December was Spotify at 13.8. Google Podcasts came in third at 2.26%. Fourth was Overcast at 1.7. And fifth was CastBox at 1.08%. And that's everyone 1% or greater. Those under 1% in order were Pocket Cast, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Amazon Music, the Podcast App, Player FM, Podcast Republic, Downcast, AntennaPod, TuneIn Radio, Evox, Pandora, Deezer, Samsung Podcast, Podimo, Rezo, Castro, iCatcher, Mixerbox, Podkicker, RSS Radio, and Podcast Guru. And then many more that come in at less than 0.02% and don't really warrant mention yet. Again, those were based on IAB numbers for December. All of that. Nice. So where have we been? Well, I was a guest on Memories with a Beat. Thanks, Tiffany, for having me on the show. Her show is one where the guest picks a song that has a lot of memories for them, and they say why and what the importance of that song. So you can listen to that interview now to hear which song was the one I felt was the most important, significant to me, and brings back the most memories each time I hear it. Uh, we did that interview via Lips and Connect as well, and you can find a link to the show in the show notes uh, for this episode. and. Um, I was also interviewed for the Long Island History Project podcast, also used Lips and Connect, but that one is not live yet. Uh, we will mention it more when it, the interview goes live. We'll put a link in then. In the meantime, if you are looking for a guest for your show and be willing to use Lips and Connect, I am more than happy to come on any show about any topic, be it college basketball, Star Wars, Star Trek, or anything else, or even The Last of Us. Just email me, rob at lipson.com. Right on. We were also at um, Make Your Podcast Sound Amazing. This was our very first live YouTube event of the year. Tips from the expert. And that happened on January 19th. But of course, because it's on YouTube, you are welcome to go check it out already. And you can definitely see Mike Russell from Music Radio Creative co-hosted. Well, actually, he was the expert, of course, and Brian Coddington our uh, video guru here at Lipson was his co-host. It was an amazing, amazing thing. Please go check it out, if, especially if you need like help yeah, really, about, with your audio. I was about 11 minutes in. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. But then where are we going? We also have my very first, this is me, Elsie. My very first virtual event is happening early February, February 2nd. 2023. It is the Indie Pod Summit. You will see a link in the show notes there. And that is bringing together over 500 independent podcasters together to kick off 2023 and really ignite a year of independent podcasting. All right. So that's the thing. And then we also are doing our February live YouTube event, which is no pod fade guarantee for 2023, which I think is an awesome title. Uh, with the amazing Bethany Hawkins, and that is February 15th at 2 p.m. And so we're going to be focusing on what you wish you knew and what not to do when launching a podcast in 2023. 
We're also doing a little something different, which is all about planning for longevity. So what does that look like? And I think that this is helpful, not only just for people who are starting their podcast, but maybe, hey, maybe if you're feeling a little like defeated and are a little bit like, what else? Maybe you want to jump off a cliff. Don't do it. Come hang out with us. Why people abandon or quit their podcast, publishing your first 10 episodes so we can get you through that or even in a big chunk of them. What happens if your podcast does pod fade? So we've, we're going to have tips on that kind of stuff, too. That's it. And Rob, you are going to be traveling here and probably somewhere when this episode is live. Yeah, the day after this comes out, I'll be on a plane on my way to PodFest Expo in Orlando. I'll be there to January 26th to 29th. I uh, hope to see you there. And I am speaking on Friday during the lunch session. So I'll be doing kind of a state of podcasting and getting on my soapbox about this whole cliff thing that doesn't exist. And then, of course, uh, Podcast Movement Evolutions, March 7th to the 10th in Las Vegas. And then NAB Show, April 15th to 19th, also in Las Vegas. And then finally, she podcasts live. Well, actually, you'll be at that one. That's uh, June 19th. Washington, D.C., everybody. Get your plane tickets. Please book your tickets to book your tickets, buy your tickets and book your hotel room, please. Link in the show notes. Go ahead and check it out there. Okay. And we'll have a few others this year and we'll mention them as we get closer. Folks, check your calendars. Block off those dates now and book your tickets. And um, and if you are looking for a job in podcasting, sure, always make sure to go to podcastingjobs.com. And don't forget to send in your feedback for anything we did or did not mention on this episode. You can record that feedback and email it to us at the feed at libsyn.com. Or you can call us 412-573-1934. Or you can use SpeakPipe at speakpipe.com slash feed. Or you can go to use Lips and Connect, as we mentioned earlier, and record it there and then send us that recording. Um, however you want to get us that. But um, we are missing promos because um, obviously we're missing them. We just didn't look in our spam folder, right? But you're going to need to resend them because we just didn't <laughs> see them. <laughs> Correct. So go ahead. And, and hey, we cannot wait to chat with you again and have you featured on the next episode of The Feed. Talk with you in a couple weeks. Bye. Ciao.